Well, let's take you to Paris now, where we're joined by Peter Humi, who's a freelance journalist. Uh, Peter, nice to see you. Uh, look, uh, Emmanuel Macron was trying to mediate this crisis, almost getting to creating a meeting between Biden and Putin. Uh, what are the next steps here? Well, that's right. Uh, those those uh, famous or infamous, I should mm -hmm. say, uh, pictures of uh, the huge uh, table in the Kremlin uh, with uh, Putin at one end and uh, Emmanuel Macron at the other. I mean, the best that can be said is that at least Macron tried. Uh, I think it seems fairly obvious now that uh, Putin was not really in any uh, mood to negotiate, but uh, they went through the motions. And I think Macron now and uh, the rest of the European Union uh, are uh, will be uh, meeting, continuing meetings over the next uh, day or so. They'll be looking at uh, similarly tough sanctions. There has been talk to the SWIFT, as uh, Nomi was mentioning there from London. Uh, so far, that has not been decided. This is a sort of a, a financial institution that uh, organizes a very secure means of transferring money internationally. If they were to cut uh, Russia out of that, obviously that would have severe impacts on Russia and incidentally on uh, on uh, other countries in Europe. Let's not forget that uh, Russia is, uh, or Europe is one of Russia's main trading part, uh, partners and vice versa. So uh, the sanctions will actually hit uh, both ways, more severely in Russia, of course, but uh, there will be repercussions uh, in countries such as France and uh, the rest of uh, Western Europe. Yes, yeah, so given that, just how much can we expect this to sort of destabilise Europe? What kind of scale are we talking? Well, let me give you an example. 17%, 1-7% of all uh, uh, gas that comes into France uh, originates in Russia. So, I mean, it's almost a fifth yeah. uh, of the gas supply potentially could be could be cut off by uh, by the Russians, uh, not just to France, of course, but to, to the rest of Western Europe as well. So that would uh, mean the repercussions in, in France would be increased uh, energy costs. We'll see prices going up at the pumps, uh, potentially also the price of food, uh, wheat, uh, cereal, uh, between uh, the Ukraine and Russia, they, they do produce a very large amount of uh, the, this kind of product, uh, which is largely consumed in, in Europe and elsewhere in the world. So uh, the repercussions could hit the French uh, population in the pocket, of course. Uh, so uh, I, I think there will be some reluctance, some reluctance uh, to uh, put... Uh, uh, to go on the uh, to go on the sanctions full throttle, I, I think this is something that uh, the European Union, the 27 members, will have to try and negotiate amongst themselves. And Peter, you know, we've talked uh, earlier on in the show about the reactions in Ukraine, in Russia, and also in the states. Uh, what are people saying there on the street in Paris? Well, there's 40,000. People that uh, live in France of Ukrainian descent or first generation Ukrainians, in fact, uh, and they've been out in the streets in front of the uh, in front of the Russian embassy protesting uh, today. And uh, it, they've been getting a lot of support from uh, political uh, parties. There was the leader of the Greens showed up to express his support outside the Russian embassy with the Ukrainian uh, protesters. Uh, otherwise, uh, there's a lot of talk. Uh, there's going to be some demonstrations planned uh, this coming weekend. Uh, but ultimately, it's talk. Uh, action is we're seeing in terms of demonstrations and some of the uh, the moves uh, concerning sanctions. But it's uh, as yet, uh, I wouldn't say there was a huge uh, protest move, movement building up. But we'll see what happens in yeah. the in the days ahead. Of course.